Welcome back to Clark Park on a Saturday. My name is Dave Vincent with the World Players of Handball. The WPH is proud to bring you the four-man icebreaker challenge, the first official WPH event since February. Now, we wanted to show people that we could safely hold an event with COVID protocols in place. We closed down the park, have the referee wearing a mask today, had the limited number of fans social distance themselves, also wearing masks while ensuring that the players were distance and in their bubble and as safe as possible. That's why we call it the icebreaker. It's breaking the ice for other tournaments and other locations and other towns to do the same. Now we're in beautiful, gorgeous Clark Park, the newly renovated former Randolph Park, now Clark Park here in Tucson, Arizona with David Fink, Shorty Ruiz, Abraham Montijo, and Sam Esser in this four-man challenge. Yesterday, we saw Shorty Ruiz get past Sam Esser by the score of 21 to 17, 21 to 16 in the first semifinals. But here in semifinal number two, it's David Fink. Now we're playing one match each day starting yesterday. And then here today on a Friday, we have the David Fink, Abraham Montijo semifinal match that is going to get played out. You see Dave on the court right now. Dave came in as the number one seed. It was Shorty Ruiz, the number two seed, and then uh, followed by Abraham Montijo and Sam Esser. Now, our referee is the executive director of the United States Handball Association, Matt Kruger. We want to thank him and the USHA for their participation in this event. Vern Roberts is here, and he's going to referee a match tomorrow, which is nice to see. But before we get to all of that, we have this one to play out, David Fink and Abraham Montijo. You heard our referee, Matt Kruger, zero to zero. Abraham gets that for a serve. Point. Nice first point there from Abraham. And a quick side out from Dave Fink. Dave came into this tournament incredibly fit. I haven't seen him like this. Some people are going the opposite way during the pandemic. That ball was called long. Let's take a quick look. Oh, look at that. Good eyes from Matt Kruger. That ball just over the line there. Second serve and an ace from Dave Fink. But most people here in the pandemic are going the opposite direction. They're gaining weight. They're, they're stagnant. They're not going out and working out. It's, it's kind of hard to do it if your gym is closed down, as you know. But not Dave Fink. He's found ways to get outdoors. And he is incredibly athletic so far in this event. He was just running circles around this park before this match kicked off. A lot of eager, eagerness and a lot of energy coming in from David Fink. Throws that ball back in. We're all together at one here, and a foot fault called from the ref. Second serve. One plays one. Abe playing a little bit too far back, but he's had to, I would assume, just kind of respect that deep line that Dave's been pegging on pretty much every rally. He's going deep every single time, and there's another long one. Abe's going to have to watch those little shots up front. Dave Fink, former number one Race for Eight star, second most winning player in the history of the Race for Eight tour with 113 wins. Replays one. 
Meanwhile, Abraham Montijo is the current finalist of the 2019 USHA three wall nationals in Toledo. These two do spar every now and then. That could have been called a screen, wasn't. It's called a short instead. The weather is incredible here in Tucson, Arizona right now. You might hear some air traffic though, because when the weather gets nice, the Air Force Base lights up. So expect a little bit of that noise as Dave starts running off some points here. Now we didn't invite fans to the tournament, sort of a secret underground event. We just wanted to show you that it can be done and you could have a tournament with even more than four people. You can see that we've blocked off all the other courts, but the protocols for this, this town from the mayor allowing us to have, I believe, 10 people per court. And there's five courts. That means that we could have 50 players in this tournament as long as the others around them are socially distancing and uh, following the correct protocols out in the stands. And right now we have exactly that going on. The referee's wearing a mask. I have a mask on. So if you're at your hometown, you have outdoor courts, you can certainly do something like this. And let's take a quick look here. Abraham, a little bit cautious of our referee on that as he backpedals over it. Eight to one is the score, and that's looked like it was gonna go deep. Abraham cut it off, he was screened a little bit, no call, point, nine to one. This is game number one. Montijo now talking to himself. Fink scoring some quick points here. Oh, that's such a great serve. Abe's going to have to call a timeout eventually. That serve is amazing. Fink breaking over the top of that ball. There's a little bit of air traffic there in the background. Players say it doesn't really affect them much. just seems that Fink is made for these outdoor courts. Goes up to the roof there. 14, one. Abraham just can't get underneath that ball correctly. Dave Fink has a great balance of going up to the roof and then also hitting those corner kills. And he's very difficult to play outside. He's been to the final, uh, semifinals of the three ball nationals multiple times, more than once. And he hasn't played a lot of times out there. Ball was called screen. Oh, that's a flub and Fink gets the Sapo shot into the right corner. Says he's sorry immediately. 17 to one is the score now. Pass shot right there. Exceptionally well in three wall. Timeout being called now from Abraham Montijo. 18 to one is the score. The WPH Icebreaker Challenge three wall, four man handball tournament. Our first since February, it's been that long. Pretty good money in this event. It was not publicized. It's an invitational only. 
basically just trying to get some guys together so they can have a chance, gave them a month head start on getting back into shape, gave them a ball and said, here's the date. They all agreed and now they are, they're here. The big question is, will there be more tournaments like this? And Dave Fink breaks over the top of that ball, keeps it down, and gets the point. 19 plays one. Here's 19 to one now. No screen. This is the party ball. Abraham went for it, missed it. Now 20 to one in game number one. Really do want to thank Matt Kruger here. And look at that point, that ball just barely over the line. Let's take a quick look here at the replay. If you can see dead center there, look at that ball just barely make it over the short line there as Dave Fink takes game number one against Abraham Montijo, 21 to one. Yesterday, as I said, it was Shorty Ruiz getting past Sam Esser. The score there was 21 to 17, 21 to 16 in game number two. And Shorty found himself down both of those games really big. And he came back to defeat Sam Esser. That means that Shorty will be in the final. Sam Esser is in the third place final, so he's waiting for the loser of this match, and the winner will go on to face Shorty Ruiz. The loser will play for third place tomorrow on a Saturday here in Tucson, and then the finals will be on Sunday. Now, we're not announcing the times. We don't want 200, 400 people to come out and watch these. We want you to watch on the internet. That's why we're pulling this off here. And we're gonna have more of these events too, unannounced. So get ready for that as Dave Fink flips that ball in the back. This is the longest rally so far here in this match. And Dave breaks over the top with his left hand. You know, yesterday Dave and I were in the, in the booth out here talking about how well these guys play in their strong points. Dave knows every single fact about these guys and what, what ball they can hit and what they can't. And one of the things that he said about Abraham Montijo was that Abe just has an incredible serve, but Dave's just not letting Abraham get into the server's box. Could get there from Dave Fink. Abe should win this point and he misses it. That's sort of how Abe's day has been so far as he grabbed his eye guards and acted like he was going to throw them off his face. He's very frustrated right now. Abe knows that he can play better than this. In a lot of ways, this is the first tournament of the year, so you kind of have to work out some of these kinks as that ball breaks. Abe's frustrated, but he really shouldn't be, is what I'm saying. You see the star next to Dave Fink's name on the score board there. That just means that Dave won game number one. That score was 21 to one. As I was saying earlier, you, the USHA is here this weekend. Matt Kruger and Vern Roberts are watching all of the games. Matt is refereeing. This is his second ref spot in this four-man tournament. So we do want to thank them. They're basically, well, you know, they miss the game like everybody else does, but they're here to kind of scope out to see how the, well this goes. They're also volunteering because they love the game of handball, and we do appreciate that. And back to the fans, unannounced, but still some showed up. And they do have the ability to play on these other courts. They just elected not to. The chairs have been set up in the back to honor the six-foot 
social distance rule. Referee called the wrong score there, but it was all fixed. Let's try to give Abraham one point. Nice athletic play there. Abe has not been winning these points when Dave runs off the court. And he doesn't win this one either. Dave Fink drives him off the right side, out the right side door. And there's that one point again. Matt Kruger keeps giving a point to Abraham. Four to zero is the score. So we've mentioned that there's gonna be a lot of, of these events coming up. That's just something that we're hoping on. We're trying to give groups in towns and cities that have handball players and outdoor courts notice so they can get into shape, play with the correct ball. It's the WPH USHA 21 ball. And then come to Tucson, Arizona and social distance and play handball and get filmed and try to get back into the swing of things. So there, there will be more is what I'm trying to say. That ball was in. Wait a second. Let's take a quick look at this. Dave Fink says it was out. Here's the ball clearly in from that angle. Let's take a look at this angle. Referee is uncertain, but Bam, that ball's in by three feet, 18 inches. Yikes. Referee is going to agree with Dave Fink and say that it was out. That's unfortunate there. That's a, that's a missed call. And another point now for David Fink. So our referee has made some incredible calls here already today, and that's the first wrong one that he's made. Although he did miss call the score a couple times, but that was corrected immediately. And ball did not make it back to the front wall. Dave Fink, another point here. Abraham Montijo only scoring one in game number one. And yesterday it was quite amusing watching Sam Esser, who is now working for the United States Handball Association, go up against Shorty Ruiz, where it looked like Sam was gonna win both of those games, but Shorty came back and won. 21 to 17, 21 to 16. As Abraham Montijo sends that ball over the top of the roof here. If you're traveling into town, if you're new to the area or if you're wanting to play a game we're on North Alvernon Randolph Park but the handball complex is called Clark Park and this specific show court is the Freddie B show court Should have been nine to zero, I believe. Referee just took a point away from Dave Fink. It was nine to zero. Great corner kill. He drives Abraham back as far as you possibly can, 55 feet back, and Abe just gets it to the front wall, and then Fink goes for a safe corner kill. And there's the 10th point, really should be the 11th point. But I'm not a dweller, so I'm not going to.
11.0. Yesterday, Dave Fink said that Abe has a great deep power hop serve, and he's a really strong uh, player with the overhand game, and that he's very excited to play Abraham. He was looking forward to this match. since it was announced internally about a month ago. And that's a great corner kill from Abraham. Gets back into the server's box here, looking to get his first point. Now, our referee's been trying to give him that point a couple times earlier. But he's corrected that, zero to 12 here. And there he does. First point for Abraham, and he puts his hands up in the air. I think we've all been there. That's a tough ball to get back. Just clips the corner deep, right above that number three that you see there. Looks like the ball's gonna go over that sidewall, so you play it that way, and then it doesn't. Referee calls that a screen. Both players not happy about it. These players have such great serves in the outdoor game that you almost don't want the referee to call a screen. I mean, I'd rather take a screen if I'm returning the serve than to have to try to get one of their ace serves back, which is literally impossible to do. At least in four wall, you have a chance to take the ball off the back wall if it even makes it there. But these guys outdoors, they have these excellent serves. Sean Lenning, David Fink, Abraham Montijo, these guys, Shorty Ruiz and Mondo Ortiz. You, there is no back wall to take the ball off. You're having to step in and get it immediately. So if, if your server serves a screen, talk to the ref and say, just don't call it. I don't want a screen. I'm never going to argue a screen, not outdoors. But if you're over 55 years old, then you can call it on every rally because that's what happens when you get older. Everything's a screen. Good serve there from Abraham. Another foot fault. I don't know if you're standing 60 feet back as a referee if you can see all these foot faults. I guess you can. Good get there from Abraham. Athletic play. I think he gave up a little early on that one, though. And a timeout called here from Abraham Montijo. The four-man ice breaker challenge. We are breaking the ice to let you know that you can come out and play handball, whether that's indoor or outdoor. And that's the point I wanted to make earlier. We are outside because it, it's a little more obvious that you have a chance of, uh, of staying away from COVID if you're outside, but you can still do that inside by following the rules. And this was called a long serve. Let's take a quick look. Look at that ball just Wow, that is so close to call right there. Good eyes, though, from our referee. But if you're an indoor player and you can follow the rules that the club puts forward, Perhaps they'll let you do a small tournament and get back into the swing of things. I like that shot right there from Abraham. That's just so brilliant. Yesterday, Dave Fink told me that that was considered a kill shot. He said a kill shot doesn't need to be one inch high. 
You use the wait. Wait a second. You called that a foot fault there. Second serve. I think that's about the sixth, fourth, fifth foot fault here. Just a little too eager there from Dave Fink. I know the players are just really frustrated with foot faults, not necessarily from this tournament at all, but just in general. It's a pretty big discussion. And the foot fault called again. Let's take a look here. That looks like he's over. I mean, I think I can see the heel pretty close to that line there on that, that look. Good get right there from Abraham. Doesn't make it to the front wall. One of the longer rallies so far of this match. You hear a little bit of air traffic there. There's a lot of Air Force jets out today. We see the, the A-10 Thunderbolt II, the Warthog, the F-16s, the C-135, Compass Call, Everything's in the air. And another point here for David Fink. We're not too far away from the airport, in fact. shot there from Dave Fink. Also want to thank Benny Young, who was instrumental in getting this park to where it's at today. It was really his dream originally 20 years ago or so. He's here. Helped prepare this. Got the leaf blower out. The hose washed everything down. Did a great job. Want to thank Benny Young for all of his work. He told me that this court complex Right here, if you dropped a pin in the actual center of Tucson, Arizona, what they call Midtown, this is exactly the spot that is the middle of Tucson. I did not know that. Breaking over the top is Dave Fink. Very lethargic is Abraham Montijo there. Abe's third and final timeout, 60 seconds. David Fink wins the first one, 21 to one. Here he's up 17 to five. He asked for the score there from the referee because I believe it's been two or three times here in this match. The wrong score was called coming in after a timeout. It's a pretty good pass. First one. Abraham doesn't get the ball back to the front wall and another point for David Fink. If Dave goes on to win, and it looks like he's going to, he will be in the finals up against Shorty Ruiz. And if Abraham loses, and it looks like he's going to, then he'll face Sam Esser tomorrow for third place. Fink now at 19 to five here in game number two. Now at 20 to five. Match. And there it is, 21 to five, game number two, David Fink defeats Abraham Montijo and will now be in the finals to face Shorty Ruiz on Sunday here. It's the four-man icebreaker challenge. 
brought to you in part by the world players of handball. Now let's quickly take a look at some of the stats, the combined stats from game number one and game number two as we crunch the numbers of this ice breaker challenge between David Fink and Abraham Montijo. Now Fink had 11 uh, ace serves, Montijo had two. I would have assumed that Montijo would have gotten more than that uh, if he were in better shape but uh, he didn't. Fink serve provided a huge advantage as he out-aced Montijo 11 to 2. Now I, I know that Dave said this earlier that Abe had a great serve but Abe just wasn't able to get that thing going. Now Fink took advantage of the serve that came back punishing weak returns with 13 first strike kills. Fink won 24 of his 42 points that's 57 percent with his first or second shot. Nothing came easy for Montijo though who was not able to execute any first strike points and made just two aces. The return of serve, both of these guys uh, had no kill shots on the return of serve. Dave Fink zero, Montijo zero. Right hand rally enders, Fink had 12, Montijo had three. Left handed rally enders, Fink, uh, he had 19, and Abraham Montijo had zero. Montijo is known for having one of the best right hands in the sport, but was never really able to get on track with his right handed offense in this match, being out killed by Fink's right. 12 to 3 and out killed overall in the match 31 to 3. Now one of my favorite stats is the six plus shot rallies as you see it up there on the screen. Fink had 17 and Montijo had 8. The Tucsonians play a, a number of six plus shot rallies in this 100 degree desert sun with Fink winning 68 percent of those six plus shot rally exchanges. When it comes to the airs though Fink had a pretty high number even though he dominated this match. He had six errors. Montijo had seven. The fly kills went Fink's way, nine to zero. I believe Fink was looking to be aggressive, taking uh, many balls out of the air as possible. And uh, I think it was a little obvious as he had those fly kills working at nine to zero today. The hinders, there were zero hinders. The time of the match was 33 minutes, 45 seconds, and the final score was David Fink defeating Abraham Montijo 21 to 1, 21 to 5. That's a total of 48 points. Now, again, we're going to have uh, the next round coming up tomorrow here at Clark Park in Tucson, Arizona, as Sam Esser goes up against Abraham Montijo, who we just saw here, for third place. And then on Sunday, it'll be David Fink and Shorty Ruiz. We're going to take a break. We do appreciate the fact that you've tuned in to watch this icebreaker challenge, three man, three wall, I should say, uh, money tournament, four man event at Clark Park. As we are social distancing during the pandemic, we're trying to follow every protocol, but really ultimately we're breaking the ice so you can break it at your club in your city so we can get back to the sport that we love most, handball. And we're gonna do that tomorrow right here with more continued coverage of the four-man three-wall icebreaker challenge at wphlive.tv. Have a great rest of your day.